Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Please, you help me to share the videos again. I don't know. You just lock me out all of a sudden. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. I just saw that um, the something went out all of a sudden. Hallelujah. Please help me to share the videos again. I don't know what happened. It just locked out. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. So we just share the videos again to, with our people so that we are here. We know we are, we are connected. Amen. Hallelujah. So I was talking about, please let's share the videos again because I don't know. It just, I think it's this Facebook Wahala. It just logged me out. You know, I think maybe somebody is trying to tamper with my account. I don't know. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So I was talking about how do we recognize the voice of God? How do we recognize God's voice? You know, and um, uh, or how does God speak to us rather? Amen. Yeah, it's okay now. Praise the Lord. Just help me to share the videos again so that more and more people can, uh, can, um, can get the video. Hallelujah. And I'll also share here. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The devil is a liar. You know, this technology sometimes it is well. But no problem. We keep moving. The Lord is with us in the mighty name of Jesus. So I was talking about that um, God Almighty, you know, um, can speak to us through audible voice. He can speak to us through audible voice. I gave an example of Noah. I gave an example, you know, of uh, Moses. And of course, in Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 1, Exodus chapter 1 from verse um, from verse 1 to hallelujah. Exodus chapter 1 from verse 1 to 15 talks about how Moses, you know, hear the voice of the Lord. God can speak to us audibly, can speak to us audibly, can tell us things that we need to do. Hallelujah. Praise the, praise the name of Jesus. So God can speak to us audibly and tell us what we need to do and how to uh, and how to go. Uh, about it so the lord can speak to us physically you know by hearing his voice and the bible also makes us to understand in uh, about saul on his way to damascus in book of Acts chapter 9 verse 44 the bible says god spoke to, uh, to you know to to saul and he says saul saul why thou persecutest me and he began to wonder and say who are thou and he had the voice of god so it is possible for us as women of god in the ministry to hear the audible voice of god and you know, and to you know, to recognize that this is the law speaking to you and her. And I pray that today the law will speak to you and her in the mighty name of Jesus. It is very important for us to recognize the voice of God. It's very important for us to know what God is saying to us per time and per season. It is very important for us, you know, to follow His leading and to follow His instruction. And today, when the Lord speaks to us, you know, I pray that you know our hearts will be open to receive from the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Please help me to share the video because I don't know why it went off, but it is well. The devil is a liar. So therefore, also, Abraham had the voice of God. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible talked about, you know, the Lord spoke to, the, to Abraham and said, get thee off, you know, and go to the place I'm going to show you. The Lord called him. He had the voice of the Lord. And he said, here I am. When we hear God's voice, God expects us to obey him. God expects us to follow him. God expects us, you know, to respond to him. Hallelujah. So also, David, in the book of 2 Samuel, let's read that 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 23. David also had the voice of God. David had the voice of God. 2 Samuel chapter 23. You know, when I was sharing this message with my husband before I started, he also mentioned, you know, one, and I think this is where he was referring to, the second Samuel chapter 22, 23 rather, <laughs> verse 2, David said, the spirit of the Lord speak through me, is what I upon my tongue. You know, so David also heard the voice of the Lord. He also had the voice of the Lord and he responded, you know, to God's voice, you know. So when the Lord, the Lord can speak to us through audible voice, through audible voice, we can hear God's voice speaking to us. And another way by which God can speak to us God speaks to individuals through dreams and revelation. He speaks to us in our dream. 
He shows us things, you know, in our dreams. So apart from we hearing the voice of God in our ears, hearing him audibly, he can reveal things to us. He can show things to us, you know, via revelation. He can, you know, as we sleep in the night, he will show us things. Although sometimes the way we see things in the dream is not the way it sometimes happens. Sometimes some, some people have the idea, you know, they have the gift that God show it to them the way it is. So when we hear the voice of God, when the Lord speaks to us, when he, speak, when he show us things, there is need for us to pray more about the revelations. There is need for us to pray more about the things that the Lord revealed to us, you know, so that, you know, we will know further what step the Lord wants us, you know, wants us to take. And also, the Lord also speaks to us through his prophet, you know, and through the word of God, you know, he speaks to us through his prophet, he speaks to us through his word, he speaks to us through his prophet, hallelujah, and through the word of God, he sent his word, you know, to us. He can use, you know, a prophet or a, someone, you know, ahead of us, you know, to confirm the word. But like I said, like I said earlier, that our personal relationship to, with God is key, is important, is too important. We must not joke with our personal relationship with the Lord because it is too important for us to hear the word of God for ourselves. Before anybody will bring up something and say, this is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord is saying. You yourself, you must be able to hear God for yourself because as this person is giving you that interpretation or is bringing the word, there must be a confirmation in your heart. There must be a witness in our spirit. And we cannot obey when we do not know how the Lord is speaking or recognize the voice of the Lord. May we recognize his voice today. May his voice speak to us and do us good in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, may the Lord give us the grace to recognize his voice and to follow truly what he's saying to us in the mighty name of Jesus. So the Lord still speaks today. And then, and I also put here, God can speak to us through life circumstances and situation. He can use anything, anything to speak to us. Like as we are having this program now, the Lord, you know, is speaking to someone. Even beyond what I'm saying, the Lord can speak, you know. Especially, you know, for, for me, when it comes to our movies, sometimes it is true messages. When I'm in the church or when I'm sitting down hearing messages in church, that is when God will begin to speak and begin to give me insight into him. But I can hear him speak because I recognize his voice. Do you recognize the voice of God? Who is the one speaking to you? The one that is speaking to you, you know, is the one, you know, whom you will follow. Because he said, my sheep knows me and they hear my voice and they follow my voice. Are you following the voice of the Holy Spirit? Are you hearing the voice of the Lord? Are you doing what he wants you to do? Are you following after his instruction and after his way? The Lord expects us to follow his instruction and to follow his way. Please, you can help me to share the videos again. I know we shared the first part. That is why I, I put this one, you know, as the concluding part. Praise the Lord. Now, why is it important for us, you know? And God can speak to us through his word, like I said, as we are having this program now. The Lord is speaking to us. Is the Lord speaking to someone today? If the Lord is speaking to you, type it, write it down and say, the Lord is speaking to me. The Lord is speaking to me. So the Lord can speak to us through his word. You know, when we study the word of God, he can speak to us through his word. He can speak to us through, um, you know, people around us. He can speak to us through circumstances and situation. Maybe as you are going out, you see something. God can just use it as a point to begin to talk and begin to, you know, um, open our eyes to see one or two things, you know, and like that. So the Lord can speak to us through any means. But what is important is that you recognize the voice of God and you hear God for yourself. In ministry, you cannot just depend on others to hear God for you. Woman of God, you must hear God for yourself. You must for yourself. Praise the Lord. The Lord will answer your prayer. Our dear brother, I think, is a brother that put up a prayer point here. The Lord will hear your prayers in the name of Jesus. So you must hear God for yourself. It is too important. You must not depend on others to hear God for you. In the Old Testament, even right from the beginning, Jesus Christ Almighty, you know, um, the Lord Almighty, you know, came down in the garden. He spoke to Adam and Eve through, you know, directly. He did not use an animal. He did not use anything. He has a personal relationship with them. So, and the same is still here today. The Lord wants to speak to us as individual. He wants to speak to us personally. He wants to speak to us, you know, through his word. He wants to speak to us. He wants us to hear his voice and have fellowship with him. The Bible says, when we live with, when we stay in the light, when we dwell in the heart, we, we, we know we have fellowship with God and with one another. You understand me? We recognize his voice. Say, my sheep knows me 
and they recognize my voice. So the Lord Almighty wants us to hear his voice and want us to follow his voice. And may you recognize the voice, voice of the Lord today in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome my husband online. God bless you real good, sir. He has been behind the scene, helping us to arrange things. So I, I, I bless God for your life, sir. You're welcome in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So now, the importance of hearing from God personally. It is very important for us to hear from God personally. You know, why? Why is it important that you should hear directly from God and you do not go through an intermediary? You understand me? Because, number one is because God has given us direct access to him. The Bible says, oh, you know, we can come confidently, boldly to the throne of grace. We can approach God. He wants a one-on-one -on -one relationship with us. You know, with God. We can approach God directly. You understand me? He has given us that direct access. So when we hear God directly ourselves, He gives us that direct access. You understand me? Some people will say, a prophet says, I should go and open the church. You understand? And God has not spoken to you yourself. You understand? A prophet can hear something one by time and hear another thing and, you know, and, you know, and just talk as he is convinced. What the most important person in this ministry is God and you because he's the one that has called you. He's the one you are working for. He's the one you are answerable to. You understand me? He's the one, you know, that you are accountable to. So therefore, you must learn to hear his voice. Woman of God, you can't just do without hearing God's voice. You can't just do without hearing his voice. His voice is too important for you to hear and to recognize. You see, there's a case of a woman, you know, of a young lady. The Lord had called her into the ministry. She was busy serving the Lord. So when it was time for her to get married, you understand me? Different brother began to come around and she was praying and everything. You know, at the point, she asked for prayer support. Now, don't get me wrong. It is not as wrong for you to ask somebody, to ask for people to pray along with you. But I'm saying that it is important for you to hear instruction direction leading from god because when the journey gets tough you understand me you'll be able to go back to the one who has called you for adventure now it's a prophet that says you're going to open a church and then you know problem of there will be definitely be challenges ministry has its own challenges ministry even as a woman leading a ministry i know ministry has its own challenges even as a woman you know serving other people ministry has its own challenges you can't just say you are doing ministry and there's no challenge there are challenges in ministry there are things, there are challenges in ministry. There are things, you know, that happen in ministry that, you know, you just need God. And if you did not hear God directly, who will you run to? Who will you run to? Where will you go when you can't hear God directly? When you can't hear God's voice directly, where will you go? Who will you run to? Hallelujah, somebody. Who will you run to? You understand me? When you run to the prophet, the prophet will run to the, you know, where will the prophet run to? You have to hear God. There's no alternative to it. God bless you, man. Thank you, ma. There's no alternative to hearing from God. It is very, very important. So this sister was telling you about when it was time, you know, so she asked, you know, the senior sister has some group of pastors and prophets that pray along with her. So she said, oh, please pray along with me. This is the something I'm trusting God. And he gave them the name of the brother. And the sister, after some day, called her back. He said, ah, the prophet said that that name is okay. Hmm. You cannot build your ministry based on what another person says. The one that you are accountable to is the one who has called you into the ministry. Just like you cannot build marriage based on the, the, somebody said is the will of God. You must hear God for yourself. Do you understand me? This sister, you know, went ahead and said yes to the brother. After some weeks, the old relationship, you know, went off, you know. And in those few weeks that they had the relationship, this brother nearly finished everything that this sister existed for. He came to attack the core covenant of God upon her life. Even not for God's grace and for God's for God's mercy. Later, she went back and he went to say, ah, but are you asking people to pray alone? You said it is Godly. He said, you said so. Ah, no, you can't marry that brother. You understand? And the sister was like, oh. So if you depend your life and your ministry on what people say here, what people say there, you understand me? Hey, you can't go far. You must hear God and obey God. God can speak and bring confirmation from the mouth of people. But I'm, the, what the Lord is putting in my mouth to say today is to encourage us to have one-on-one -on -one relationship. It is important for you to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, to hear God directly. Why? Because it will give you direct access to God. John chapter 10, verse 27. He said, my sheep hear me and they know my voice and they recognize my voice. Then number two is that you are guided by God when you are hearing God personally. He said, I, I will instruct you. He did not say, I will instruct you to, you know, uh, I will in, in, instruct all of you. He said, it's a personal thing. I will instruct you 
in the way you should go. God is interested in every aspect of our life. You understand me? If he's interested in my card working in the supermarket, like I mentioned earlier today, if he's interested about a woman of God who's a, um, a shoulder pad wanted to follow, if he's interested about the things that we eat, then are you not thinking that this work that he has asked you to do, he would not be interested in it? Of course, he's interested in this work that he has given to you to do. He's interested in this work that he has asked you to do for him. So therefore, you can't just leave God behind. You can't leave God behind. Do you understand me? You can't leave God behind because he's the owner of the work. He's the one that has called you into this work. So you can't leave him behind. You must hear him. You must obey him. Anytime he tells you, my daughter, don't do this again. Go and obey him immediately, promptly. Don't delay the obedience. Now, another importance of hearing directly from God is that doubt will be out of the way because you have a relationship with God. You hear God clearly. You understand me? You recognize his voice. Anytime he tells you to do something, you are not doubting it. Even when it looks like an insurmountable thing to do. Like when the Lord said we should go and be uploading our movies for, on YouTube free of charge. Go and share movies. Go and share book. I don't need to go and fast and pray and to say, Father, is this your voice? And of course, I know because this is the voice of the Lord. I recognize his voice. Doubt is out of the way for me. And that is the way the Lord wants us to relate with him. You know, relate with, when you are close with somebody, when you are intimate with someone, you understand me? Doubt is out of the way. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Doubt is how out of the way. Hallelujah. God bless you. If you are just joining us, you can share the video with other women of God that you know to be part of this this afternoon. Hallelujah. You know, Psalm, you know, Psalm 62. I read to her Psalm 62. Let me just take that scripture. Hallelujah. Is the Lord speaking to someone this afternoon or this morning, this way? Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 62, verse 11, He said, God has spoken plainly. He speaks expertly. When you have direct access to God, when you are hearing God personally, you hear God plainly. You understand me? You hear God plainly. God bless you, my sister. God bless you in Jesus' name. You understand me? You will hear it plainly. He said, God has spoken plainly. And I've heard it many times. Power of God belongs to you. God speak plainly. You will hear him, you know, plainly. You will hear him, you know, what he wants to do. You understand me? And he said, God has spoken plainly. And I've heard it many times. Now, this is a man that has intimacy with God. You can't walk with God and not have intimate with him. You can't think you are in the ministry and not be intimate with the Lord. You understand me? Sometimes some people will come and say they want to come and join our church. You understand me? I'm not a pastor, but I'm just using that word, our church. You understand? You know, a woman of God told me something, said, when this lady came to join the church, the Lord told her, this is what this lady is for. That is a woman that is working closely to the Lord. Sometimes, you know, the people that we should not draw close are the people who draw close. Why? Because we are not paying attention or we are not even hearing from God at all. Hallelujah. So you will hear God plainly. Doubt is out of the way. When the Lord said, I should go and share the first, the 10 books, uh, 100 books, you know, my, uh, my fourth book, Dare to Trust Him. I did not need any sort to hear. I did not need anybody to interpret it for him because I heard him clearly. He said it. He said, give me an offering. And when I did, he opened an uncommon door for me. When you hear the voice of God and you obey him, you understand me? Things will definitely go well for you. You understand me? When others are struggling in ministry, you will be doing ministry with ease. And they'll be wondering, ah, woman of God, how are you managing? Ah, is it not the same ministry we are all in? In fact, people will be thinking that maybe you've added something to him. You understand me? There is nothing as, as potent as obedience. When you are obedient to God in the work of the ministry and in every other aspect, you understand, things will go well for you. Because when he asks you to go, you will go. When he asks you to sit, you will sit. When they say you should stand up, you stand up. You understand me? And they begin to say, ah, we are trying to just penetrate. We can't penetrate. Because the Lord will be warning you, don't go near. There was a, there was a woman, there was a woman, you know, uh, that was trying to come close to, to me. And Right from the beginning, when this woman was trying to come close to me, I was not at peace in my spirit. Why? Why was I? Why was my spirit like that? It is because my spirit is connected to God. And the Lord was trying to call my attention. But you know, as a woman being, you know, you want to embrace people, you know, especially, you know, when they know that you are a woman in ministry and they come to you, begin to seek counsel for ministry. You must hear from God. It is not everybody that you have to draw close. 
Is everybody that comes to meet you and say, be my mother in the Lord, that you will be their mother? You must hear from the Lord. Is everybody that say, you are my mentee, or you are wanting to mentor me, that you will mentor? It's not every program you will go. It's not every place they invite you that you will honor. You have to ask God, what do you want me to do? Now, this is where I'm going today. Now, there is an assurance of his voice when you hear God personally. You know that this is God speaking to you. You understand me? You don't need, you don't need an intermediary, you know, to speak to, you know, to speak to God on your behalf. The Bible says we can come confidently. Confidently. What did he say? Confidently to the throne of grace. Where we can obtain mercy in time of need. He said, confidently, confidently, we can come to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants us to approach his throne confidently. You know, confidently, directly. When Jesus Christ died, and you know, at the point that he gave up the ghost, the Bible says that the curtain of the temple was torn into two. If you, you know, in the Old Testament, the people used to go through the priest. But by the time Jesus Christ came and he died for us, we have direct access. Even right from Genesis, we have access to the Father. But you know, the tearing of the curtain, giving us direct access. We can go into the holies of the holies. We can go into the holies of the holies. You understand me? You see, at the beginning of the ministry, when you are just starting out a ministry and things are not, you know, you need people. You want people around. You understand me? There is a tendency for us to begin to gather people. You understand me? We call them this multitude. They will come. They will gather. But don't be, you know, some people might show zeal. They might show whatever and everything like that. Don't be carried away by zeal. Hear God. Who are the people that you have chosen for me? Many times people say, I want to join your ministry. I say, you can't join. We are in Spain. We are, even when I was in Nigeria, we are just five in the ministry. Not because we do not want to have people. God bless you. Everybody that is just connecting. The Lord bless you real good in Jesus' name. Not because I could not bring more people in. But I know what the Lord has said to me. The Lord said to me, keep it simple. Keep it low. You understand me? You don't need a multitude to do what we want to do. Now, kind of ministry, if I need to shoot a movie, I can invite people. They don't necessarily have to be members of my ministry. Before they can be part of it, you must learn to hear God for yourself. It's not everybody that you will draw close. This woman was trying to come close and come close. And every time you understand me, I was having that caution in my spirit. I was just, just too strong. And I was sharing with someone and said, what else? How do you want God to speak to you again? God is calling our attention. He can speak to us through circumstances and situation. We can hear his voice. In this case, he didn't tell me audibly at the initial stage that I don't get close. But it was, my spirit was not just connecting. See, woman of God, you can't connect to everybody. It's, it's important. You are not sent to everybody. You understand? And everybody is not sent to you. And the fact that you cannot connect to a person does not mean maybe, it may not necessarily mean that that person is demonic or something. It's just that that person is not part of your journey. That person is not meant to be part of your journey. You understand me? You are not sent. There are people you are sent to. God bless you, sister, that just connected online. Everybody that is just coming online, let's just keep sharing the video and keep inviting others. You know, if you are just joining, there is a first video because the network went on. There's a first video that went on. So this is the second one. Hallelujah. So you cannot just connect to everybody. It's not possible. Your spirit cannot just blend with everybody. It is not possible. You must know the people that the Lord has raised for you. Even when you are choosing people who are going to be your leader, uh, mentor, fathers in the Lord and everything, don't choose out of sentiment. Let the Lord choose for you. You can't be. It's not possible. You can't be connected to everybody. You understand me? So I can't just flow with everybody. If there are some people I will get connected to, who will get connected with me, that they are just there in my life for a season. After some time, you know, they will go on, I find my level too. You know, that does not mean that person, that might not be, I, I put the word might not be, that that person is demonic. But it's just that that person is not relevant to your life. This other person, I later find out the reason why God did not want me to bring her close. Why my spirit was repelling and repelling and repelling. And I can't just but thank God enough. Because of things that have happened in time past. I've drawn some people closer to me out of sentiment. You understand me? People that you should not even give the place of a, you know, of a mentee. Not to not talk of you. are not making them your friend. You understand me? Ah. So we should be, God bless you, woman of God. Uh, Sister Rachel Okatola, God bless you too. In the name of Jesus. And everybody greeting me, God bless you too. I have brought some people close to me that, if not for God, you understand me? Some people, some women of God, their ministry has crumbled today. 
and they are just managing to do why because they did not pay attention to hear from god they are just bringing everybody associating with people here and there you can't be friend to everybody you can't share associate with everybody and i do say the fact that you go here to minister does not mean that you become their friend over there you know them as a you know as a colleague in the ministry but that doesn't mean that you establish relationship with everybody hallelujah so as long as the voice of god is brought over time you must know how god speaks to you now what do you do when god speaks you must listen hallelujah god has something to say many times you know god wants to speak to us but we are so caught up we are so busy and i am also learning more more about that that you know before you do anything sometimes we just go out to go and do the program yes god dropped the idea but you must learn to listen to god how do you want me to do it you understand me god works in diverse way my husband was giving me an example when i was just giving him a summary you understand me about uh, what god wants me to share in the program today and he just said something he told me he, he, you know that you know uh, on, on, on this point i want to make that you have to hear god you go at every point in time what he wanted to do and he gave me an example of david that when david was to pursue the people you know philistine at the time there was a strategy that god gave him he asked of god at every point in time david asked god and god speaks to him and you know he asked god and he listened you understand me there was a time god said pursue the other time he said do not pursue so you cannot assume that because god said yes to sister a uh, minister hey apostle hey reverend hey, i don't care about title and women of god let's not get get carried away by title you are who you have by the grace of god not by the title don't because you see the bishopic prophetic the evangelistic and you say oh yeah i just say yes no you must listen to god when god is bringing people your way when god is asking you to do things you must listen to god ask god how do you want me to go about it so you must listen so david did not just go and ask god he waited he listened you understand me so what do you do when god speaks you must listen number two is that you must follow the instructions. There is a pattern. There is a way that God wants things to be done. You know, there are some parts of the Bible that we read and we get tired of it. We, you know, it's so boring. My husband and I we were sharing one day. And you know, you know those parts that you, 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 it's so boring, you know, in court. They are the, you know, when God is giving instruction, uh, uh, it must be by this. Uh, let's open to Genesis. I think I'm, I, I'm saying, I'm just saying it on my head, you know. And you know, when, when, when Noah, was to build the ark when the lord commanded noah to build the ark the lord gave the instruction you know the ark of noah when the ark of the covenant has to be built you know when the children of israel you know they were out of egypt the lord gave instruction there was an instruction at every point in time the instruction of how to make the ark of noah was different from the instruction of how to make the ark of the covenant the ark of noah was the ark that contained everybody hallelujah the ark of noah was the ark that contained everybody you know it was such a gigantic and a big mark uh, and a big uh, ark. but the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant was not as gigantic as that it has another structure it has another body it has another thing that asked you know it was just something that they just push on the cart but the ark of noah was the one they had to enter in what am i trying to say woman of god for every program, for every vision, you must ask God, how do you want it to be? It is not like uh, the way we have been doing it, so shall it be now and forever more. Do you understand me? You can be doing the same thing the same way and you expect a different result. You must ask God, how do you want us to do it? For every movie message, we ask God, God, what do you want us to do with this? Even before the Lord now gave us the instruction that we should be uploading on YouTube, I always ask God. There are some of our movies that when we produce them, we took them for outreaches. For several months free to be showing it run that is the instruction everything that the lord asks you to do every vision you understand me every vision has an instruction every assignment has an instruction like now i've been advertising the women in ministry conference for some months now and by the grace of god in a, you know it's about 15 days now we have 15 more days to be last year there was a way it was god's leading that led me to hold the conference but i do not want to hold it like i owed it last year so i was asking god how do you want us to do it this year and god i started speaking god i started instructing because you must not only you know 
hear the voice of God, you must listen and you must follow. And by his grace, I'm going to follow his instruction. When you want to have success in ministry, it is not just enough for you to recognize. It is not just enough for you to ask God. You must listen. You must pay attention. And secondly, you must follow. Follow the instruction. Follow the instruction of God. Don't bend it. Don't twist it. Don't get it twisted. Follow God's instruction. Follow his leading, the way he wants you to do it. If you say this time around, go around. If you look at the journey of the children of Israel, if you look at the journey of the children of Israel, when they wanted to go, when they wanted to, when the Lord parted the Red Sea for them, it was a different instruction. When the Lord will part Jordan for them, it was a different instruction. When the Lord will bring down the wall of Jericho for them, it was a different instruction. So you see why we have to just get intimate with God? You see, that is why, you know, obedience is a vital key to our success in ministry. Do you think they could have just crossed the Red Sea by just looking at the sea? You understand thing? <laughs> so you cannot do the same thing and it produces a different result. No. But God has, our God is not limited. He has different ways by which he wants different things to be done per time and per season. So that is why we must watch closely. As I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself as well. Like I said, I said, I'm learning more and more. You know, like when the Lord said, go and start women in ministry online. He gave me the vision of women in ministry conference two year, uh, uh, about two years ago when we had a conference in Barcelona and we split out women in ministry apart, married women at part, and we were having program. It was from there the vision came to my heart. But I didn't do anything until, until it until last year. And the Lord said, gather women of God together. You understand me? Thank God for years of experience in ministry, but much more than years of experience, it was because the Lord asked me to do it. Because whenever the Lord gives you instruction, when you listen to God, when you or recognize the voice of God, you listen and you follow, success, you understand me, will definitely come. It was such a powerful program last year, and this year is going to be greater because there is the way we are preparing now is not the way we prepared last year. You must learn to follow God, obey God, follow his instruction as he wants us to go. So you must follow the instruction. Supposing when Moses gets to the river Jordan and he stretches his rod again, do you think the river Jordan will pass? In the, in the case of uh, uh, the Red Sea, in the book of Exodus chapter, uh, chapter 15, the Bible says, the Lord too spoke to Moses. He said, why are you crying out to me? Just tell the people to go forward. I'll read that scripture. I'll read that scripture because it's like I'm, 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 I've been speaking for some time. I'm not reading the scripture. It's the Lord speaking to someone today. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Okay, I read Exodus chapter 14. I read Exodus chapter 14. Now, this was the instruction. Moses was listening. You understand me? Moses was listening to God. I read Exodus chapter 14. Um, a woman of God is helping me to write. Yeah. Exodus chapter 14, I read verse 11. And they said unto Moses, okay, now I'll read verse, um, I'll read verse 13. Let me read Exodus 13, 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, as I'm reading Exodus 14, 14 from verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Hear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye see today, ye shall see them again no more. The Lord shall fight for thee, and ye shall all thy peace. Now verse 15, this is where I'm going. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Now, the Lord spoke to Moses. Moses was listening. That was why Moses could hear God. Now, the Lord said to him, said to the children of Israel, let them, you know, to do, to go forward. And now, this is the instruction. He said, but lift thou thy up thy rod." and stretch out their hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now, what was the situation? The children of Israel need to go, you know, need to cross over. The Red Sea was ahead of them. And I, you know, I remember I told us that God called Moses in Exodus chapter three. He said he called him to go and lead his people. It was God's leading, you know, that is why Moses became a leader. That is, God was the one that appointed Moses as a leader, as a minister to the people. So you and I were called by God, as many of us who are called, because I can't doubt the fact that some were not called of God. Some called themselves. I've heard somebody say, God didn't call me, I called myself. You can't call yourself a ministry and you succeed there. So, but now they are faced with the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke to Moses. He gave him the instruction. 
what he needs to do. Now, supposing Moses just stood there, he did not follow the instruction. Do you think they will have, the Red Sea will have parted? If he just stood there and he's looking at the sea and he's just crying, you think the Red Sea will have parted? No. So for that vision, God is the one that called him into the ministry. He gave him, and now this is the assignment. He has been given him different assignment. You don't forget that he was the one that God used, you know, to do all the plagues that took place in Egypt. You know, and you know, the first sign, the second sign, the third sign to the tenth one. And now, God now said to him, now take the people out. He said, behold, you know, stretch their hand. So if Moses did not stretch his hand, do you understand me? Do you think the, the Red Sea will have parted? Okay, let me go to Exodus 14, verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand. So Moses listened. Moses asked from God. He recognized the voice of God. He listened to God. He followed the instruction. And, you know, he, you know, he followed the instruction. He obeyed. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night and made the sea, the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry land and the waters were a wall unto them on their right and on their left, which, you know, the water parted. And the Bible says the Lord made the angel of God to go through. You know, over the night, the land became dry. You know, it is the sea. Normally it's supposed to be, you know, messy and wet. But, you know, the Lord created an expressway. So for every vision God has given unto you, you must wait on God and ask him for instruction. That is why you record success. My husband and I, for the past five years, we are missionary here in Europe, which means we have not been doing any governmental work or anything due to some circumstances beyond our control. And the Lord said, don't worry, I employ you. I will employ you. And so I am an employee of God. We are not, we are not working secular jobs or something. We are lazy. We are working. My husband and I, we are working for the Lord. And in this work of God, to the glory of God have been in this little time of 22 years of ministry. I've come to understand that every assignment has their own instruction. You understand me? Everything that we need, you want God wants you to do has their own instruction. So let's just not just conclude and say the way we have been doing it. Why will you keep doing it the same way every year? And we used to hold it 10 days. Must you hold it 10 days this year? Have you asked of the Lord? Maybe the Lord just wanted you to do it in the NIVG. But he says it's our yearly program. That's the way we have been doing it. Must you do it that way? Is that the way the Lord wants you to do it? You can't keep doing the same thing the same way and you, rest, uh, you expect, you know, a different result. You understand me? The Bible says the children of Israel pass through. I read verse 20, 26 before I go to the next scripture. Verse 26 of Exodus 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out their hand over the sea and the waters may come up again upon the Egyptians and upon the chariots and upon the horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand. Moses obeyed him. If God says stretch your hand, you are not stretching. God said give, you are not giving. And you are wondering why the ministry is not growing. How will the ministry grow? When you yourself, you are not a giver. You are looking for people to sponsor the ministry. And the Lord is telling you your salary, use it for the program. And you are taking a God, you will provide on your own. Which provision do you think God will provide first? You are the first number one person that God is going to use to finance the vision. You can't be organizing program and you are separating your money. You are separating your money. This one is my personal money. People must give. You understand me? People that are close to us know that even as we are working for the Lord and we are here full time on God's work, you know, my European people are watching online. You know, and Western world people are watching. You know what it means to be in Europe and you are not working, you are working for God? You understand me? It's not like what used to be the house rent, one year house rent in Nigeria is our one month rent here. You understand me? And people will pay in one year comfortably and live. It's what we pay every month. We pay bills, we pay everything, and God has been faithful. And in the midst of it, he has been giving us gigantic projects to do. This year when we had the minister's program and my father in the Lord was around, it was thousands that cost us to do that program. And yet we are not, we are working for God. But the one who has employed us is more than able. Why? Because we stay where God wants us to stay. We were in Netherlands before, by his instruction, he brought us to, 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 to Spain. By his divine instruction, he brought us to this present city. We will have stayed back in Barcelona. That is why you have to walk. You have to follow God. You can't just be carrying your bag. You are a woman of God. And just be doing things anyhow. It is by instruction we are where we are. And when you stay where God wants you to be, things will work. When Moses stretched forth his hand, didn't the sea parted? The sea parted now. Didn't they cross over? When God said stretch his hand again, he stretched his hand again and the sea covered up and all their enemies were destroyed. In the, in, you know, in, you know, you know, in the in, in, in the Red Sea, 
when you are following the Lord and you are obeying him, he will cause your enemies to be destroyed right before you. Hallelujah. Do you understand me? You see, it is not about you shouting it and whatever. The Bible says, when a man prays, blesses the Lord, he will make his enemy to be at peace with him. And the enemy that refused to be at peace with him, they will go in exchange. Because the Bible makes me to understand. He said, because I'm precious. I'm honored before God. He said, he give men in exchange for my life. Hallelujah. When you are listening and obeying the Lord and you are following him, he will fight your adversary. That was what he did for the children of Israel. You think if, they, if Moses had just stood there and he didn't do anything, something will happen. You understand me? God is not a magician. God is a God of order. When he speak, you must ask him, how do you want me to do it? And when you follow, you know, you know, if things will work. Things will work for us. You know, the way he wants us to, to you know, he wants us to, to, you know, to do it. You understand me? Praise the name of Jesus. But when it comes to the issue of River Jordan, when the each children of Israel, when they got to River Jordan, it was a different journey entirely. It was a different instruction entirely. And the Israelites, you know, they crossed the River Jordan under the leadership of Joshua. So you cannot use somebody's pattern to run your own ministry. Moses was the one that you know, used to cross the desert. But when it was done for Joshua, it was Joshua turn in Joshua chapter 3. Let's read Joshua chapter 3 from verse 15 to 17. Hallelujah. Is the Lord speaking to someone? God is faithful. If only we can ask him. If only we can listen. If only we can follow. If only we can obey the Lord. Hallelujah. And as we pay attention to his word, as we pay attention to his word, he will lead us and guide us in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, the Lord will lead us. He will guide us. He said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way to go. So if God is giving the instruction, what does he expect from us? Obedience. Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. I read from verse 15. Hallelujah. Now, as they were, as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, as in as they step into Jordan, and the feet of the priest bear the ark were deep in the brim of the water, for, jo for Jordan overflowed all his bank all the, all the time of the harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon like a hill, very far from the city Adam. That is beside Saraten. The water separated. The water even left the sea now. It left the river for them. And those that come down towards the sea of the plain, even the salt sea filled and were cut off. And the people passed over, passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. You know, in, in the case of Moses, God told him to stretch. In the case of Jordan, God told him, you know, to do what? To just tell the people. To put the, you know, the priest, they should carry the ark of the covenant. Like I said, the way the ark of Noah was built was different from the way the ark of the covenant was built. You understand me? And the Bible said they stood there and the Israelite passed on dry ground until the people were passed over Jordan. For every assignment of God, there is an instruction for God. As I begin to round up this evening, so what do you do when God speaks? You must listen, you must follow. And one important thing is that when you are listening to God, yes, yeah, so there are so many copycat ministry. Everybody wants to do it this way, that way, the way this person is doing it. Do you know the instruction that person received? Do you know the commission that the Lord has given unto that person? Hallelujah. Amen. So, when the Lord speaks, you must follow. And when you are hearing from the Lord, you understand me? You are accountable to God. You understand me? Well, that is why you have to develop your voice, you know, your relationship with God, and follow Him all the way. When you are hearing from God, you are accountable to God. And, you know, when you are hearing from God, you understand me? You stay focused on God and obey God. What does he expect from us? Obedience. The Lord expects us to obey him. You understand me? Now, what are the consequences when you refuse to obey the Lord? What are the things? When you are hearing from God, you must stick to the voice of God. Amen. Amen. The Lord will uphold all of us. Thank you, man. In the mighty name of Jesus. You must stick to God's instruction. Now, there is a case in the Bible, and I will use this to round up this today and round up this series of obedience. I trust the Lord that we all, whatever the Lord gives me to teach again next week, you know, and like that. I understand that in some places, some women will not be able to come for a conference or program. So the Lord asked me to do this so that we ourselves will be blessed. And I'm sure that we have been getting blessed in this program. Now, there is a, there is a story in the book of First King, First King chapter 13. I know as women of God, we must know this verse very, we must know the scripture very, very well. The Bible says, and behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. Now this man, he recognized the voice of God. 
he heard the voice of God. The Lord gave him an instruction. Go to Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. God has sent him to King Jeroboam because Jeroboam was not doing well. I was not living well. And he cried against the altar. Now he obeyed the Lord. He listened to God. God gave him an instruction. He followed. And then he got there. The Bible says, he stood by the altar. I'm reading First King 13. And cried against the altar. And said, O altar, that says the Lord. Behold, the child shall be born unto the, unto the house of David. Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the abrace that born incense. And this scripture, this word, the prophecy came to pass. Because when Josiah became the, you know, uh, uh, the king, as young as he was, the Lord used him to clean the whole entire system. You understand me? And he finished the word of the Lord. You understand me? He finished the assignment. He did what the Lord said unto him. In verse eight, 6, the Bible says, and the king, I'm reading 1 Kings 6, uh, 5, 6 now, 1 Kings 13, 6. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored again, you know. When the man even wanted to attack him, because he was on the admission of God, the power of God was backing him up. When the man, when the king wanted to attack him, when you are obeying God, when you are following his instruction, even Bible says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You know, will lift up a standard against them. When this man was attacked by the king, the Lord defended him. But that was not the end of the story. You understand me? And after that, the Bible says in verse 7, says, and the king said unto the man of God, come up with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, 1 Kings 13, 8, now, if thou would give me half that house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that came in. You know, as I'm reading this scripture, now it's just coming to me that is this man of God, this young prophet, like let's say a young woman of God, is she not a talkative? Just like our sister Eve, our mother Eve was a talkative. Because when the, the devil came and said, did the Lord say, she began to talk and talk and talk what the Lord says. So there are what the Lord speaks to you. There are some things that they are for your personal consumption. It's not every prophecy that the Lord gives to you, you are expected to keep it concerning the ministry, concerning your life. It's not every prophecy that you share. Because it was what this man said now that was used against him. The Bible says, he told them, he said, the Lord said, even if you would give me the house of your kingdom, the Lord said, I should not stay. I should not do anything. You understand me? Supposing he has kept his mouth. Because I believe that when he was talking, that was when that young man heard him and took the, the message home. Now, and that was when, that was when, you know, that was when, that was when, you know, uh, he, 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 he took the word from his mouth. The Bible says <laughs> that, you know, the in verse 13, in verse 13, and he said unto his son, the son went home and took the word to the father. He said, certainly me the heart. So they sat in the house and he wrote their own. And he went after the man of God and found, found him. The Bible says in that city there was an old prophet. In this case now, I, call, I look at as a young woman of God and an elderly woman of God. You understand me? Anything God tells you is for you. If anybody brings a contrary message apart from what you have heard from God, you should not follow because you have developed to hear from God from time to time. You know God for yourself. When he gives you instruction, he wants you to follow it. You understand me? God spoke to uh, into the man. God spoke to the God spoke to the prophet, the minister himself directly. Then why would God now send somebody to come and give him a contrary instruction? Woman of God, have you wondered why? God has told you in this ministry when you are doing program, don't charge money. You understand me? And you have been following, and you have been doing that. And suddenly somebody just come up and say, you know, women of God, you know, we need money in ministry. Let them just begin to pay for this. And you now begin to obey. You understand me? You have disobeyed the voice of the Lord. This young man, he received the instruction from the Lord. The instruction was clear. It was direct. There was no intermediary. Then why should God now come to speak to him through another strange prophet? Why should there not be an intermediary? He obeyed as instructed. But then, even though he obeyed as instructed, a senior man of God comes, came and meet him and said, eh, eh, I receive in a vision. Any vision that does not tally with what God has spoken to you is not on God. You understand me? Learn to hear God from yourself and hold on to God, to God's word. God will not contradict himself and he will not contradict his word. He will not tell you, hey, 
and tell another person to come and tell you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it does not tally with what the Lord has said to you. I'm not saying God cannot speak to you through people. God speaks to us through people. But it should be a confirmation, especially when it has to do with instruction, with sacred things of the ministry. For every vision, for every ministry, there are covenants. You understand? Because our God is a covenant keeping God. Every ministry should have, supposed to have, a covenant that is sustaining that ministry. And that covenant is supposed to be known by you only. And you keep the time of the covenant. And then somebody is not coming to say something contrary. Woman of God, you should not listen. But alas, our brother listen. This man of God listen. And what happened? What happened? The Bible says in verse 18, first, God, first king, he said unto him, I'm a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with you into that house, that he may eat bread and drink water. Can you just imagine? The Lord, the word of the Lord came to him directly. Now another person is saying that I received in a vision. And they brought it to me in the realm. An angel. Which one is more superior? God or the angel? May we not be spiritually, you know, <coughs> be spiritually, you know, confused in the mighty name of Jesus. He brought a confusion to this man. And because probably because of the status, because of the years of ministry, because of everything, he said an angel spoke to him. When you can hear directly from God, why must I hear from an angel when God can speak to me? Why must I hear from an intermediary when God can speak to me himself? The Bible says he went back with him and did eat bread in, the, in his house and drank water. And it was this same old prophet when he brought him back that he now brought the word, the spirit of God now came on him said, and he cried to the man of God that came from Judah saying, that says the Lord, for as much as thou has disobeyed, what was the issue now? Disobedience. The mouth, the mouth of the, the mouth of the Lord. And thou hast not kept the commandment which the Lord that God commanded him, but came back and has eaten bread. You see now, he was the one, he lied to him. We must be sensitive. We must be designing. Women of God. That is why, you know, we must keep close watch with God. Keep close work with God. Be designing. Stick with by whatever God says to you. Stick by whatever God asks you to do. Don't listen to any, you know, don't listen to any contrary word. It was the same man that now brought the judgment from the mouth of the Lord. He lied that an angel had spoken to him in the first instance. And he predicted it. And the man did not make it back. The Bible says, uh, you know, a lion devoured him. The Bible says, and when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And the carcass was against him in the way. And the ass stood by it. And the lion also, you know, stood by the carcass. I'm going to stop here today. A lion devoured him. But you know that from our example of last week, son, and this young prophet again, I noticed one thing. When the word of God comes to them that they have sinned, you understand me? I did notice that there's no form of repentance. Maybe supposing that man has, you know, that young prophet and say, oh God, I'm so sorry I've disobeyed you. Maybe the verdict will not have been there. So it is dangerous for us not to obey the Lord. If we want to finish strong and to finish well, we must obey the Lord. We must obey the Lord because disobedience can lead to death and destruction. It is when you are alive that you can do ministry. May the Lord keep us you know, standing in him, keep us relevant in him, in the mighty name of Jesus. May he grant unto us the spirit of obedience, in the mighty name of Jesus, and sensitivity to his spirit. You understand me? When the Lord spoke first, he would not change his mind. When the case of Barak and Balaam, God already told him, don't go. But he kept on going back to God. And that is the way some of us will behave sometimes. God had already tell you, no, don't associate with that woman. And you still keep pushing it. Don't go to that program. Don't do this one. You still keep pushing it. And when God says that you don't want to hear again, the Bible says he could not hear the voice of God. because okay, follow them. He couldn't even see again. It was the, the donkey that heard. May we not end up like this young prophet in the mighty name of Jesus. Why don't we just begin to talk to the Lord at this moment and begin to ask that the Lord, the Father, I understand that obedience is a vital key to my success in the ministry. You are the one in life and ministry. You are the one that have called me. Give me the grace to obey you. Give me the grace to obey you. Give me the grace to walk closely with you. You know, to draw closely with you. To walk closely with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me the grace to recognize your voice. Give me the grace to follow your voice. Give me the grace to obey to the letter. 
to listen in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, Father. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, I bless your holy name and worship you. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus as your daughter, Lord, I cry unto you. The Lord will give me the grace of God, Lord, to be more intimate with you, to walk closely with you, to go closely with you, to go deeper with you. Give me the grace to always ask of you. Give me the grace to always listen. That will not just come into your presence and be asking. That will listen to your word. Give me the grace not only to listen to your word, oh God, Lord, almighty, but to follow the instruction and to follow to the letter. Lord, ah, for partial obedience is disobedience. That young prophet, he disobeyed. You know, it was a it was a partial obedience. He obeyed, you know, by going there, but he ended up you know, following the instruction to the letter. Lord, I receive grace to God to follow your instruction to the letters, to follow your instruction, or to give your instructions to the letters. In the mighty name of Jesus, women of God, let's talk to the Lord that the Lord will give us the grace to follow Him. Give us the grace to obey him. Give us the grace to stay by his word. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The silence of the spirit is very important. Because some people will come and parade themselves in the form of servants of God and everything. We're going to pray as a father. Give me the grace, O God, Lord, to be designing. Give me grace to design prayer. In the name of Jesus. The silence of the spirit. In the name of God, grant unto me. So that I will not end up like a young prophet. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, grace to discern, grace to discern, grace to discern. In the mighty name of Jesus, helping Lord over Lord to be discerning, to follow you closely, to follow you all the way. In the name of Jesus, so that I will not end up like the young prophet. In the mighty name of Jesus, grace to follow. Give me grace to follow. Give me grace to follow. In the name of Jesus, Father, oh God, Lord, help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give me, Lord, the signing of the Spirit. Lord, to be able to discern, oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. When deceivers are around, deceivers are everywhere in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. You see, some people, they know that you believe in God, that you are a servant of God. So they will even come and portray themselves. Give me the grace to be, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to discern. You understand me? Lord, expose deceivers around my life. Expose the deceiver around my life and grant me the grace to trust in you like never before in the name of Jesus. Father, receive grace, oh God, Lord, to trust in you like never before, oh God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God, Lord. And Father, oh God, Lord, that there are people, oh God, Lord, around my life, around the ministry, around my home, who are deceivers, who are not of you, who have come with contrary, oh God, Lord, vision, who have come with contrary, oh God, Lord, mission. Father, oh God, Lord, disarming them, expose them, oh God, Lord, make a public show of them, dry off it over them in it, in the mighty name of Jesus. More may I not, oh God, Lord, stop my joy happy. May I not be cut short, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace to obey all the way. Lord, for success in life and ministry. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I've been telling us about women, of, women in ministry, for those who have been joining, women in ministry. Ministry conference is a vision that the Lord laid on my heart to gather women of God together, eggs of ministry, female overseers. And the second edition will be coming up in, uh, in about 15 days from now, from 19th to 20th of October. I want to ask you, you know, I believe in corporate prayer that wherever we are, I want you to just sow a seed of prayer into this com into this conference and say, Father, give that the Lord Almighty will make a name for himself, that the conference will hold the way God wanted to hold, that the Lord will give him the grace to hear from him to follow in the name of Jesus, and everything will be done the way the Lord wants it to be done in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, Lord, pray for the Women in Ministry Conference and receive grace, O God, Lord, to follow you to the letters in the mighty name of the Lord. Grace to wait upon you, to ask of you why you want it to be done. Grace, Lord, to listen and to follow instruction. The Lord, I will not do anything that you don't want me to do in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that in the conference that the Lord Almighty we in all Almighty will visit every woman of God that is going to be there. Those who are here to make up their mind, those who are still trusting God for transport, for ticket, for coming, visa. That the Lord Almighty will grant grace that will gather us together from nations and Lord to the glory of His name. Not unto me, but our gathering will be unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, make this year women in ministry conference a different one. A one, O oh God, Lord, that shall be unto you, O oh God, Lord, gathering unto you in a unique way. Gather us, O oh God, Lord, from various nations and kingdoms, O oh God, Lord, and bring us together. Every entrance is in the way of your people, Lord, remove in the name of God. Whatever is stopping or want to stand in the way, the Lord, you will remove on the way of your people in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be manifestation of your power. Those who are still trusting you for visa, Lord, and Lord, there shall be favorable turnaround in the name of God for every resources 
as a ministry, as an individual, Lord, will provide. Thank you, most wonderful Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you. We worship you, we adore you. Thank you, Lord, for the way, Lord, you have taken over today. Thank you, Lord, even though the first video was destructive, but thank you, Lord, because you are in charge. You are we are possible to do this. Thank you for your word that you have sent to us. Pray that your word will prosper us. Your word will do us good. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive grace to obey you, to always ask of you, to acknowledge you, to recognize your voice, to go deeper with you. Lord, to follow you in the mighty name of Jesus, to listen to you and to follow you in the mighty name of Jesus, to obey you to the letters. And Lord, grant us success in life and ministry. Pray for the Women in Ministry Conference. Lord, make a name for yourself, O God. Lord, as we have responded all to hold you to God, Lord, gather your daughters, O God, Lord, your servant from nations and from kingdom. And Lord, let your name alone be glorified. Let our needs be met. Let our bills be paid. And cause us to have more than enough. As we have asked you this day, we thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen and amen. God bless us real good in Jesus' name. Women of God, we are blessed and highly favored. Thank you so much for staying online. Thank you for connecting. Thank you for sharing the video. Lord, you know, thank you so much and for all the prayers. I see some prayers here. I'm saying a big, a big amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And I want to use this opportunity to invite everyone, everyone watching me. You know, any woman of God around the conference is holding in, uh, to, uh, you know, Hotel is the Avant in Torreon de Adios in uh, uh, Torreon de Ados. They say it's not Adios. So we know the address in Madrid, Spain, and registration is still going on. You can still register for the conference. Like I said, if you have registered, you must receive a message that you have registered, you know, and please pray along with us. We look forward to welcoming you. We still have some few accommodation available. So if you are coming for the conference, please register and make yourself available. The Lord has prepared his daughters, he's preparing us, you know, to be a blessing. Joining me this year is Pastor Buki Olo, which is a mother in Istra, a mother, you know. To, 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 to us, and I've been in ministry for more than 30 years, you know, and the Bible makes us understand that iron sharpens iron. I trust the Lord will speak to, through her, will speak through me, and through all the seminars. We all, well, I, I, I updated the website this morning, so you know, you can go there and see the various seminars we're going to be holding in this program. More importantly, we covet your prayers. Remember to pray for me, remember to pray for the conference, you know, and the Lord will help us, and we shall all finish strong in Jesus' name. And like I said last week, if you are living so far away, you cannot make it down. And you want to support the conference, no amount is too small, no amount is too big. It's not compulsory. God will, will always do his work. But if you want to sow a seat towards the conference, you can also do that. Lord bless you real good in Jesus' name. We miss same time next week, by the grace of God. If you are just joining, there is a video that was disrupted. So I think it should be on my timeline now. That is the part one of the message today. And this is the connected, the, the concluding one. Thank you so much for staying online. Thank you for sharing the video. Thank you for your support and for your prayers. I look forward that next week we will be here together by the grace of God. Don't forget, I'm inviting you for the conference. The Lord bless us real good in Jesus' name. Bye, women of God. God bless us real good. Amen.